His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa left Cairo following an official visit to Egypt. His Majesty the King was bid farewell by Egypt's President Abdel Fattah al Sisi, Egypt's Minister of Housing, Utilities and Urban Communities, Asim Al Jazar, Bahrain's Ambassador to Egypt, Fawziya bin Abdullah Zainal, and members of the Bahraini Embassy in Cairo. His Majesty King Hamad returned to Bahrain following visits to Jordan and Egypt. During the visits, His Majesty the King held talks with His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn al Hussein of Jordan and President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi of Egypt. The talks focused on Bahrain's solid relations with Jordan and Egypt, as well as the latest regional Arab and international developments. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa expressed sincere thanks and gratitude to the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi for the gracious welcome and hospitality accorded to His Majesty the King while on a visit to Egypt, reflecting the strength of the deep-rooted fraternal relations between the two countries. While departing Egypt, His Majesty the King expressed deepest pride in his talks with President Assisi on ways to bolster bilateral cooperation across various fields to serve the common interests. The agenda of the 33rd Arab Summit to be hosted by the Kingdom, the latest regional developments and the challenges facing the Arab nation, in addition, to the ongoing Arab and global efforts to establish peace, security and stability across the region and supporting the endeavors to reach an immediate ceasefire in Gaza and defend the legitimate rights of the Palestinians, particularly their right to establish their independent Palestinian state. His Majesty the King commended the dedicated efforts exerted by President Assisi to lead the efforts to establish peace in the region, facilitate the delivery of humanitarian and relief aid to Gaza, and prevent the forced displacement of the Palestinians from their lands, as well as his firm stance in support of preserving the Arab national security, protecting the Arab interests, and enhancing the joint Arab action. His Majesty the King prayed to Allah the Almighty to bless President Assisi with abundant health, happiness, and long life, wishing him continued success and Egypt further progress and prosperity. The Chairman of the Supreme Council for Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, paid an inspection visit to the Mohammed Jassim Kano Health Center in Hamad Town, accompanied by the Minister of Health, Dr. Jalila Hassan to review the facilities, departments, and health services provided to the patients. The chairman affirmed Bahrain's keenness under the leadership of His Majesty the King with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to provide the best services to all in health facilities with high quality and efficiency to the community in different circumstances. He was also briefed on the various services provided at the center that contributed to improving the services provided in all aspects. The Minister of Health appreciated the inspection visit, which comes out of the government's keenness to develop health services. She stressed that the health authorities in the kingdom are constantly working to meet the needs of patients and visitors.
delegated by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, visited the city of Ramallah to deliver a written letter from His Majesty the King to the President of the State of Palestine, President Mahmoud Abbas, regarding His Majesty's invitation to participate in the 33rd Arab Summit hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain in the upcoming month of May. During the meeting, President Mahmoud Abbas welcomed the Minister of Foreign Affairs, praising the close historical relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the State of Palestine and the two brotherly people, and the development and growth they are witnessing in various fields, noting the joint efforts to advance these relations at the political, economic and social levels. President Abbas expressed his heartfelt wishes for the success of the Kingdom of Bahrain in organizing the Arab summit and achieving good results in support of the Palestinian cause, serving the Arab interests and enhancing joint Arab cooperation. The Palestinian president asked the Minister of Foreign Affairs to convey his greetings and appreciation to His Majesty the King and to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and his wishes of abundant health and happiness and wellness to the Kingdom of Bahrain, further growth, development and prosperity. President Abbas also expressed his appreciation for the Kingdom's stances in supporting the rights of the Palestinian people and their causes in all the international forums as well as its continuing efforts to establish the foundations of peace, security, and stability in the region, noting the Kingdom's constructive role to end the war in the Gaza Strip and protecting civilians. For his part, the foreign minister expressed happiness in meeting with the Palestinian president, noting the warm reception and generous hospitality. Dr. Abdel Latif Azayani conveyed to President Mahmoud Abbas the greetings and appreciation of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and their wishes of continued health and happiness and for the Palestinian people, security, stability, and growth. The Minister of Foreign Affairs affirmed the position of the Kingdom of Bahrain in supporting the rights of the Palestinian people, including their right to establish their independent state on the borders of 1967, with East Jerusalem as its capital in accordance with the two-state solution and international legitimacy resolutions, and the acceptance of the State of Palestine as a full member of the United Nations. Stressing the Kingdom's support of the Palestine Liberation Organization as the sole legitimate representative of the Palestinian people. Both sides also emphasize the importance of continuing joint diplomatic consultations and coordination regarding the current regional situation and the necessity on working to immediately stop the war in Gaza, prevent the displacement of the Palestinians from their lands and prevent the Israeli military from attacking Rafah. The Finance and National Economy Minister, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, delivered a statement on behalf of the Arab Group and the Maldives, represented by Bahrain, at the 109 meeting of the World Bank Group's Development Committee on the sideline of his participation in the spring meetings of the World Bank Group and the International Monetary Fund held in Washington. The minister stressed the importance of strengthening the joint international cooperation, collective efforts and developing innovative solutions and strategic plans that support achieving economic growth and sustainable development goals. He also highlighted the importance of optimal use of resources and enhancing capabilities to overcome the various challenges efficiently and turn them into promising opportunities. He highlighted the programs and initiatives launched by the World Banking Group and their role in meeting countries' needs and achieving economic development goals. The minister emphasized that security is the basis of development and prosperity and one of the main pillars for continuing to achieve development goals. He added that the lack of peace, security and stability in the world, especially in Gaza, has affected the regional and global economy. He called for concerted international efforts to reach diplomatic solutions, to settle all regional disputes and conflicts and to alleviate the suffering of Palestinians in addition to working together to achieve regional and global peace, stability and prosperity. Your Excellency Chair, my fellow governors, the world is currently witnessing one of the worst humanitarian and development crises in recent history in Gaza. The scale of destruction, displacement, starvation and disease is shocking, and the loss of development gains are generational. We thank the World Bank for the rapid damage and needs assessment report. And in the face of this humanitarian catastrophe that we are watching unfold, we urge the World Bank to live up to the moral, humanitarian and developmental obligations of the organization and plan a response that is adequate in funding, knowledge and engagement. A response that reflects the intellectual authority 
the convening power and the leadership of the World Bank among international developmental institutions. The World Bank financial and technical support is critical to enable an environment that is conducive for peace and stability in Palestine and across the whole region. We therefore urge the World Bank to go beyond the annual replenishment of the West Bank and Gaza Fund and to immediately present to the Executive Board options for an exceptional financial package from the bank's internal resources to support emergency response and early recovery and rehabilitation needs in Gaza, as well as budget support for the Palestinian Authority. And as the traditional greeting in our region goes, Salam Alaikum. Peace be upon you. So let us uh, commit to redoubling our efforts to work together to deliver peace, optimism, and hope around the world. Thank you. The Minister of Sustainable Development and Chief Executive Officer of the Bahraini Economic Development Board participated in the annual Human Capital Project Ministerial Conclave held in Washington on the sideline of the 2024 spring meetings of the WBG and the IMF. The meeting focused on the topic of digital transformation to support and develop human capital. Ways to key, harness the artificial intelligence and other technologies were discussed. Experiences were also exchanged on digital solutions that contribute to improving health and educational services in a way that supports the paths to achieving sustainable development goals. The Human Capital Project is a global effort aimed at accelerating the pace of increasing investments in people in order to enhance justice and economic growth. The Minister of Youth Affairs, Rowan Taufiqi, held a meeting with the Assistant Secretary General of the United Nations for Youth Affairs, Philippe Boller. The Minister appreciated the partnership with the UN and its agencies concerned with the youth sector and the support they provide to implement programs to enhance youth skills, develop their capabilities and empower them in various fields. She praised the close cooperation between Bahrain and the UN in implementing the King Hamad Youth Empowerment Award to achieve sustainable development goals. The two sides discussed ways to enhance the joint cooperation in the youth sector and the mechanism to advance this promising sector, empower the youth and enhance their participation in national programs. The Assistant Secretary General of the UN for Youth Affairs affirmed the United Nations support for the Ministry of Youth and praised the active participation of Bahraini youth at various levels. He stressed the importance of strengthening the cooperation that links the two sides in implementing the goals of the King Hamad Youth Empowerment Award. The chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Bahrain Institute for Political Development, Dr. Ali Arumehi, affirmed the Institute's determination to continue working in spreading and strengthening the culture of sound democracy and human rights in implementation of the High Royal Vision of His Majesty the King and in accordance with the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Board of Trustees of the Institute expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King on the occasion of the issuance of the Royal Order restructuring the Board of Trustees of the Institute. Dr. Armehi pointed out that the next phase of the Institute's work will witness more programs and events in partnership with various national bodies and institutions out of the Institute's belief in the importance of uniting the efforts in order to enhance the values of loyalty and national belonging among all segments of society. He added that the Institute, since its inception, has contributed to supporting the process of the comprehensive development of the Kingdom, which contributed to raising the awareness of the importance of national political action in accordance with the national legislation and laws and the values and the culture of the Bahraini society. The Kingdom of Bahrain regrets the failure of the Security Council to adopt a resolution accepting full membership of the State of Palestine in the United Nations in light of the suffering of the brotherly Palestinian people from the occupation, the continuation of the war and the catastrophic humanitarian conditions in the Gaza Strip. The Minister of Foreign Affairs affirmed that completing international recognition of the Palestinian state and its full membership in the UN is an inalienable legal and political right of the Palestinian people to establish their independent state on the 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital on the basis of the two-state solution in accordance with the Arab Peace Initiative and the relevant international resolutions. It stresses that this is an essential step for establishing just lasting and comprehensive peace in a region where freedom, justice, prosperity, security and peaceful coexistence prevail among all people.
The Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority participated in the high-level meeting on sustainable tourism held on the sideline of the 78th session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York, which included for the first time a discussion of the topic of sustainable tourism. The authority presented a paper in which reviewed the achievements of Bahrain with regards to sustainable tourism, stressing the kingdom's keenness to achieve sustainable development goals by working to implement broad economic programs and development projects based on developing the tourism infrastructure and the hotel sector and developing marine tourism while protecting natural and environmental resources as well as promoting cultural and heritage tourism. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adil Al-Assoumi, delivered a speech during his chairmanship of the third session of the Arab Parliament. He appreciated the tireless efforts made by His Majesty the King to support the mechanisms of joint Arab action maintaining security and stability in the region and enhancing Arab cooperation in various fields, which coincides with the upcoming Arab Summit that will be held in Bahrain in May. Al-Assoumi stressed that Bahrain enables great importance to the success of the upcoming Arab Summit. Under the leadership of His Majesty the King, which comes at a very important time in view of the conditions that the Arab region and the Middle East are going through amid accelerating events and dangers facing the region. Representative Council Member and Member of the Arab Parliament, Dr. Hisham Ahmed Al-Ashiri, participated in the meeting of the Legislative Legal and Human Rights Affairs Committee of the Arab Parliament in the Egyptian capital, Cairo. Al-Ashiri affirmed in his speech during the meeting that the Kingdom of Bahrain is moving confidently towards expanding its efforts and enhancing its achievements in the field of human rights. Thanks to the wise vision of His Majesty the King and with the follow-up and interest of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. During the meeting, Al-Ashiri reviewed the issuance of a decree by His Majesty the King, granting comprehensive pardon to 1,584 convicts on the occasion of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty, assuming the reins of power, coinciding with the celebrations of Eid al-Fitr adding that the decree comes based on His Majesty the King's emphasis on maintaining the cohesion and solidity of Bahraini society and working to protect its social fabric within the framework of upholding the public interest, preserving personal and civil rights and taking into account the principles of justice and the rule of Bahraini law. <laughs> 